on top of the world right here. She's steep. There's something smoking down there. That's not good. Jumped a tooth. That's not good. Well guys, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all. Welcome to Hartson Family Farms. And today, I'm just getting up to the farm. It's 11 o'clock right now. I'm actually not at the home farm. I'm at our furthest southwest field. It's called our Kunal Farm. And looks like we got both combines running with no grain cart and a semi sitting here, so I gotta get moving. Figure if I can check the oil with this thing without hopping the hood. Sure can. Oil's good. So when do we take the keys out? So this is our Kunal farm. We got beans, hay, and corn on it. We got about half done on the corn last night, apparently. So now we're gonna knock this field out here, hopefully in an hour or so. And then we're gonna move up to our Zymet farm and do some beans down there. We're moving. Curtis is just starting in right now. We got about half this field done already. So like I said, it's probably 15, 20 acres most before truckloads. Should get this done here in like two hours. Clean windows are happy windows. Well, clean enough-ish. Mainly I just got the uh, dirt off the outside with a microfiber cloth. Guys, 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 you're not gonna believe what I just remembered. This tractor's got ventilated seats. How have I forgotten about that? No more sweaty butts for Ron. You can definitely tell how hilly it is here. Camera does not give this justice, but Pat's like this, Curtis is like this. Big old valley that runs through this. Very steep country here. That's why we like Case IH, because before 2020, John Deere had a really shallow Modog angle. Case was always higher like this. If this, if we had a deer, we wouldn't be able to do this because you guys can't see it. But basically, the unload auger is just barely above the grain cart right now because he's at a hill like this. I'm at a hill like this. It's just something we have to do with the hills that we farm because it's not easy farming, that's for sure. Rolling call when it starts up. I'd be curious to see how steep these hills are because, like I said, we're about right here is nominal. So, I mean, we're going probably up an eight degree slope at least. On a John Deere, I could know exactly where to go uh, tell you what our, our roll pitch and yaw angles are. Any of my Case IH Pro 700 gurus know how to get to basically your, your roll pitch and yaw, so X, Y, and Z tilt directions. On top of the world right here, she's steep. There's a semi right there. Not sure whose that is though. Going down the big hill, getting pushed, actually getting pushed a lot. Barely have a load on me and I'm getting pushed. Jeez. That's about what the hill is. I'm testing my skills pretty early this morning, taking only half a head. So I think just how he planted this. Going up the big hill, now it's my turn. Gotta give her. Let's see if I got enough weight. Oh, we're slipping. Blocking the diffs. Oh man, 20% slip. Whoo, she's digging. Something smoking down there. That's not good. That was all that this tractor could handle. Yeah, Pat noticed that there's something smoking down there. Let's go take a look. What if we got an exhaust leak? There's definitely stuff coming out of there. That's an exhaust leak. Ah, this red tractor's got an exhaust leak now, so that's awesome. I don't know if that's gonna affect performance much, but it's definitely not gonna look good and we gotta address it soon. <sighs> what do you do? This tractor's only got 720 hours on it. 770 hours on it. Pat's just about full. We got just about got this field whipped. So we'll have eight, after Pat finishes this pass, Curtis is just starting eight rows. We'll have eight rows left on Curtis's spot. And then Pat's probably gonna clean up this, uh, Little little bit here. And we're gonna move over and switch over to beans more than likely. Jeff just got here with the other semi. Nice. Unloading in the truck. Don't wanna mess up the first one of the day. Just 
It's a bad omen. You do that. A lot of people would consider these overkill for the grain carts that we have. That's a 300 horse tractor on an 800 bushel grain cart. It's a 340 horse tractor on a 1,000 bushel grain cart. But it is not enough. I mean, we get in these hills, it is definitely not enough weight or power. I mean, we're just about we're almost there on power, but we need a lot more weight to slow these grain carts down when it's fully loaded. So these green strips that we have right now, these things are called waterways. It's basically, we put them in the low spots to save our soil, because when we get big rains, uh, water follows gravity because gravity's a thing. So it goes to the low spots. And when we get big rains, if we didn't have these waterways, these established thick rooted grass, it would basically take our soil away. So we put these waterways in here to basically give a, a path for water to go. Or a way for water to go, I should say. That's for the waterway. Ah, there's the 7088 chooching out its black smoke. Kurt's on his last pass, Pat is on his last pass. We're gonna finish up here, fuel things up, and we're probably gonna take both combines and a grain cart over to Tim Zimitz. That farm, it's about 15 miles away, and we're gonna start combining beans. Kurt's done making his way up the hill. Pat is, you can't see him, but he's behind me. He just finished up the one row of shame, well not row of shame, just a skip row. He's gonna come back over here and dump on me. Oh, I lied, Pat's right there. Yeah, I could come up there and fill Jeff. Guys, 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 I hear, I hear, I hear a storm coming. A thunderstorm. My uncle's gonna come down. The fuel gauge doesn't work on the 8050, so we like to top it off pretty frequently. So we're gonna top that off, and then I'm gonna probably top my tractor off with def and diesel. We'll go from there. Just kidding. Def tank is empty. Taking a play from uh, Brian Farming Video's uh, playbook. Government juicing. Just kidding, the thunderstorm is sad because Bunja uh, just called and said he's full of fuel. So let's go up and uh, dump on Jeff and Jeff can get moving. Here we go, we're gonna move. I walk down and pull the fuel trailer up so we have all of our vehicles right here. And everyone else is already on the move. Heading that way. Let's put you guys on a time lapse. The reason I didn't feel bad about falling behind is because they, Curtis's combine is the slowest machine. It can only go like 20 something, I believe. And I can go 31. So I'll catch up with them there all the time. It's pretty crazy. When I'm going 31 full bore, I can burn about 8.2 gallons per hour. But if I throttle back to 25 mile an hour, I can only burn like 6.5. So I'm going to do that. Hello. Must have been a traffic jam. Because two trucks pulled over and the combines had to stop across this bridge. It's kind of narrow. Fun fact, nine miles straight east of here is our farm. Because we're right on the Jackson Clinton County line. We just crossed it. So yeah, right there, nine miles. Just getting on the highway now. It's uh we only got like a little bit of a jog, like a mile over to get over to where we, the gravel road we need to go, but already a car snuck in between us. Got it. It's an old versatile spread manure. Look at manure. 935. I'm sure Mike Les would love that thing. Ooh, I smell that manure. And there's a nice 1660 harvesting corn. Look at all those gleaners. And there's an R60 that he's running right now. Jeez, this guy has like six of them. Just about there, Zimit Farms a mile that way. Pat's just pulling on the highway with convoy in there. Hello, hole gravers. Case, I'm talking to you. And I just want to point out, the car's been very nice today. Seeing us coming down this narrow gravel road, they pull off into a driveway or something. Thank you, guys. So we got this 14 acres of corn here. And I believe that's all we got for corn. Because that's beans and that's beans. So won't take long to buzz this corn out. Rhonda's bringing us meals. Let's go grab it. Courtesy of Grandma. Oh, yes. Plenty of stuff in there. We got green beans, potatoes, meat, dessert, sandwich. She's the best. Just getting ready to start some stuff up. Buns put some gear oil in the rotor gear case, I believe, because the dipstick was low. And I'm having me some pork and potatoes. Ooh, this stuff is good. So I was watching this. We definitely get an exhaust leak on this 340. I'm hoping it's just a gasket, but 
in the rain delay. We're supposed to get rain tomorrow, the next day, and the next day. So during the rain delay, we'll get that take a look at. Curtis is already off going down the hill and moving. Their dog is freaking cute and fun to play with. And Pat's just pulling in. He's going to unfold his head and we're going to move this way. Curtis is going to go this way. We'll meet in the middle. Just about unfolded. He's going to get her going. There goes Pat. He's just opening up the field and I am editing videos. Waiting for him to get a little fuller. So I'll, then I'll go follow him. And there's Cletus and the dog. Watch this. Hi Pooch. Hi Pooch. Hi Pooch. Hi Pooch. Hi Pooch. Fun little fluffy one. All right, time to go. Just want to say a hi to Gavin. Hey, buddy. Hope I can see you some point today. It looks like uh, I don't see you guys running anywhere. A nice barn full of hay, though. Really nice looking hay. So this farm right here, this 40, uh, this 30 acres that we're on right now, is kind of like our check farm. So this year we decided to blanket 95% of the farm in fungicide. Essentially what it does is it keeps the plant alive longer, keeps it greener longer. And what that does is it helps keep the plant alive, keep pumping moist, keep pumping uh, nutrients and everything into the corn before dying off. So it keeps it alive longer. So this field we did not put any fungicide on and like I said 95% of our farm we did. And this field, just the initial part of it, is yielding about 30 bushels per acre lower than the rest of the farm we were just on. And they are pretty similar as far as the microclimate climate, what they saw this year. So I'm thinking that's pretty, it coincides with what I've been talking to other people, that 20 to 30 bushel bump people are seeing this year. It really, it, it really paid to put on fungicide this year because this year it probably, you know, putting on fungicide was about 30 bucks an acre, 32 bucks an acre. So in order to make that work with $5 corn, you only have to make it pay six or seven bushel bump. Well, we, if it, let's just say across the farm being conservative, it bumped us 20 bushels. So we got a 13 bushel net times five bucks an acre. You do the math, that's 65 bucks an acre that just that it paid to put on fungicide. It's pretty exciting stuff, huh? We're rolling. He is full. Second time doing this. I'll pull under him and then we'll fill up. We'll dump. 71.50. And then I'm not sure what this thing is coming. 82.30. Late model 82.30. Yep. Nice. Got a little bit of down corn here. It's leaning this way, especially right in this corner. But for the most part, stands pretty good in this field. Unloading, first one at the uh, Zymet farm. Hey, we're going to go do beans. That 8230 that just drove by. And my Uncle Bon, bless his heart, he doesn't have much hearing left. I just had to say something six different times so he could hear it. But he's still doing it. Gotta commend him. Got the GPS going right now. I did an AB curve line on that first pass. This is pretty sweet. I like it. I just have to nudge it every once in a while just because of the hill, but not too shabby. So Pat's going 2.5, 12 row head. That's not too bad. Pat usually doesn't like to go this fast. I'm not complaining. We're getting stuff done. So hopefully we can knock all this stuff out and let the manually steer now because we're losing rows. Hopefully we can knock all this stuff out and switch the beans here in the next hour. Combine versus combine, combine chicken. Who's gonna win? Looks like Curtis won, or it looks like Pat won, I should say. What in the world? Rolling. Love the hustle, Jeff. There goes Jeff in the red day cab. As Pat just said, he's gonna turn around. We're gonna dump into us, and then we're gonna go dump. I am full. Let's go ahead and go dump. So in these small fields like this, it doesn't take much. Once we get our uh, end rolls knocked out, the field's pretty much halfway done. And that's basically what this is. The field is just about done. Man, some of these hills, it just, this tractor just does not. It's light on weight and power. I just about spun out going up that hill. Another truck gone. There goes Cletus. Let's hop out and check and see what type of job we're doing. Pat just went through this pass. Let's take a look. A decent amount on the ground. So it's about a two by one square. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight kernels on a two by one is about four and a half or so bushel loss. 
make it something like that. Correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments, but some of that's got to be butt showing. It's pretty dry. But I'm not checking everywhere, so like I said here, here's looking much better. One kernel in a two by one. So that's much better, up two. So it's not a perfect loss test. If you want to do a loss test, you drop a pan or you drop something that can catch stuff coming out of the combine. So you put in a wind remote, you catch everything and you take a little cross section. Jump the tooth, that's not good. Hey, shout out to uh, Carl Dodge at Dodge Brothers Farm. Link will be down in the description. Awesome hat, Hawkeye colors too. My last dump of corn for the night. Because Pat's going to quit and switch over to beans. My dad's actually going to come take my spots. So I'm either going to jump in a truck or I'm hoping that we'll, just one truck driver can keep up with beans. And I can go work on putting the inline ripper on maybe. Curtis has a, a round. So basically got down in the back. Until he's done. Pat is done. Let's go fill Jeff up. Last truck is full. Well, I shouldn't say last truck. It's not the last truck, but it's close. Time to pack it up. Go help Pat drop the corn head and pick up the bean head. Draper's right there, flex auger's right there. Oh, that's okay. Let's take this semi home. Last load of corn. But the issue is our wet bin is just, and I mean just about full. So I'm gonna have to go up there and watch it while uh, Cletus dumps this last truck, or this last hopper. Up we go. I'm just glad this is not a ladder anymore, it's stairs. Whew, I'm tired. We're just about gonna full, fill up the wet bin clump full. That bin is full. That bin is full and that bin is full. So everything here is literally going to be plump full when we're done. So I'm guessing through this rain spell, we're actually going to fill up our shed. We can hold about 60,000 of flat storage in the shed. So basically just hook an auger, to another auger, and we get an auger going across the trusses of the shed. And then we'll fill up the corn by that. You'll see it'll be a cool process. But Brian is down there bailing. And we're, we're making headway, guys. Just about full. Man, it is gonna be close. We got like two, maybe three inches left. And we got probably a third of a hopper left. It is gonna be really close. Woo-wee. We're full. We have a half an inch left. This truck's gonna fit. We are full. Let's head back down. Hey everybody, the video is getting just a touch too long, so I'm actually going to split it up right here. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys don't mind, take a second and hit that like button and of course subscribe. I've been trying to put out a lot of videos and I've been busy. It's uh, I'm in Tennessee right now. I've been working 12 hour days. It, basically, it's, it's taken a lot of extra time to get these videos cranked out, but I know you guys enjoy them and I appreciate everything that you guys do watching the video. So if you guys don't mind, hit that like button and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Take it easy. Stay safe. Ta-ta for now.